Hi there, Janet Fritz here for Galaxy Girl Creations. Welcome to my channel. This week I am playing along with a sketch from Redefined Creative and the Secret Not Secret Kit Club's Facebook group. And it is their Thursday night sketch from, a, I don't know, maybe a few weeks back. Anyway, um, it has two photos in the bottom. Actually, the sketch called for one photo in the bottom right hand corner and it called for a 4x6 but I have split it into two photos and these were taken at a pentatonics concert that I went to with a friend of mine so that's her and I at the bottom and that is a picture of the stage at on the top of the photo I am using some paper from uh, Julie Nutting that's the background paper that aqua color with the red um, stars and then the cards are from Close to My Heart. I'm not sure where I got those from, but um, they were in a pile of my papers, and I thought, you know what, this is sitting here, I'm going to just go ahead and use it. And I know it doesn't really look like it matches a whole lot right there, but in the end it does, and it looks great, and it looks, um, at least I think it looks great. <laughs> and um, I do like matching up pattern papers that are um, a little bit unexpected in um, how they're going to pair up and go together. So I brought in some navy blue to provide a little bit of grounding because the other colors are pretty bright and vibrant and um, I just thought it, it could use that and then also it balances out because the photo and the the top photo is got a lot of dark tones in it so I thought it would balance it out well. Now I'm using my square punch from Little B and I'm cutting some fishtails into those banners and then I don't know where this kind of dark reddish pinkish border strip is from. Um, I keep all of my border strips and branding strips in one spot. They are in a bin and I just kind of rifled through and found one that I thought would work. It matches the little red I guess it's more of like a dark coral color. Um, it matches that the stars and the floral on the journaling card. So that um, dark navy at the top, I wasn't sure if I wanted to cut it into fishtails on both ends or keep it more like a an arrow but in the end I'm gonna go ahead and cut it you'll see that coming up in just a few minutes I'm using some letters from freckled fawn I really love this alphabet it's pretty awesome um, but I'm lately I've been noticing that they're not sticking as well as they should uh, over time so some of the layouts they're kind of peeling up a little bit so I don't know what I'm gonna do to rectify that situation because they are super super delicate and fine um, if anybody has any recommendation or if you're experienced that problem as well, let me know and um, let me know what you're doing about it because I, I think I'm going to have to, I don't know, I don't know if I'm going to have to add some adhesive behind them or what, but they're so, so delicate and fine, I don't know how I'm going to do that. Anyway, even my fine line applicator is not as fine as these letters, so I, I, I don't know, it's going to take me some thinking to figure that one out. Anyway, I went ahead and used white letters on top of that red strip so that they would uh, it would provide contrast and it would stand out. Um, I had black letters available as well, but I'm not really using any black on this layout. So I decided to go with the white. And it's a little more understated, so I thought it would work out fine. And it just says pentatonics. And um, my journaling is going to be about... My friend and I, we went and saw them. We grabbed some food beforehand and we met up with my daughter and her husband and his family while we were there and that we really enjoyed the show. I don't go to concerts all that often, so it was really kind of a special treat. Um, the only thing is our amphitheater here, it has, we have the, the seats that are up front and then the rest is on the grass and it's on a hill and we had hillside tickets and Oh my goodness, I haven't sat on the hillside in so long, my back was killing me. But um, it was fun nonetheless, and so just note to self, um, 
bring a chair. <laughs> so uh, they do rent chairs though. They're super expensive, but uh, I, next time I probably would throw a, one of those really low to the ground chairs in, concert chair, and I think that would be perfect. So it also gets really cold there at night and we're pretty close to the bay where that amphitheater is and it gets windy and it gets cold. So more blankets, that would work as well. Now I'm going through my boxes of colored, color sorted ephemera and stickers. So basically all my blue stuff is in this box. I say all, probably 90% of my blue stuff is in this box. Um, I do have some stuff that's still pulled out by collection. Most of my Chamel stuff is all by collection because if you follow my channel, you know I'm using that for my son, uh, uh, my grandson's baby album. Um, I do have a few other ones that are pulled out still with their original collections, but a lot of my stuff, especially once it's been opened up and I've used partials of it, I go ahead and I just cut them apart and I stick them in by color because oftentimes when I'm scrapbooking random events and places and people and things, I do that more by color than by collection. So this works out really well for me. I'm using some fun foam, that's that yellow piece in the bottom right hand corner there, to pop these things up um, and give a little bit of dimension. And you can see that it's fun foam that I have punched letters out of for some other event or project for kids. So this is just leftover stuff. It works great and it's super cheap. It is sticky on one side and then typically I just use my Nouveau Deluxe adhesive or my fine line applicator to go ahead and adhere the other side. The ATG gun does not stick quite as well to it. You can get it to work but it's a little bit temper temperamental. So um, and next I'm going to be pulling out my yellow box. I think I've already pulled out the pink box and then I'll pull out red as well. And you can see me see some of the stuff that's in there. So I've had some people ask what kind of things I I put in those boxes and now you get to kind of have a little bit of a look. I've pulled out some of these things like it says number one fan on one of them. I don't end up using it. It didn't have the right feel for it and well honestly I'm not their number one fan. I really like Pentadonix but um, I doubt I'm the number one fan. I, I only have a couple of their CDs. I think I would have all of them if they, I was their number one fan. Um, anyway, <laughs> um, it really just didn't have the right feel on it. It's kind of like, it looks like it would be used for something that is a little more youthful, teenager-like, the way that it's written. I don't know. It just didn't have the feel that I wanted, especially with the um, alphabet that I've used for the title. Anyway, I'm really curious to know if there are a lot of other scrapbookers that sort things kind of by color like this. I know I see people online that do it, but I don't know, you know, how many people realistically do this. Um, it took me a really long time to go ahead and decide to cut things apart and, and sort it out like that but it really does make it a lot faster when I'm scrapbooking. I can just pull out the color I need and find stuff and I use a lot more this way. Um, in the past I would be rifling through package after package looking for just the right thing and then I'd find it and it's not the right color or it's the right color but it doesn't say the right thing. And this I just, I don't know, it just works really well um, for this type of scrapbooking that I'm doing. Um, and there's a lot of different shades of yellow, a lot of different shades of pink, and I end up using a lot more yellow than I ever thought I would. If you're someone who also pulls apart their embellishments and, and sorts them by color, leave me a note down below and let me know how that's working out for you. Is it? Do you regret it? Does it work out really well? Um, yeah, just let me know because I'm kind of curious to see if there's a lot of other people that do this. I don't know, maybe I'm just weird. <laughs> it works out for me for most things. Another benefit of having the boxes of colors is I know that in my upper left hand corner I've got a good representation of that red, the blue, the pink, and the yellow. And then my other embellishment clusters I'm missing, the I was missing the red so I wanted to go ahead and add something that was red. I can just pull out my red box 
and I can bring that color down into those other embellishment groups. And so it kind of makes it a lot easier to figure out what you're missing. Even if it's not the same shape, if you bring the same color down, it really kind of uh, completes the grouping. And I find that even if I use the same shape in different colors, that kind of ties it together as well. So you can see I've got a lot of uh, word phrases there, but that wasn't really my original thought for bringing the red into the center one. And I, I used the heart. So now I'm going to go ahead and add some heart uh, stickers. Actually, they're, I think they're enamel. They're either enamel or epoxy. Um, hearts and they're tiny and they don't stick very well so you will see that I'm going to go ahead and pull out the Nuvo Deluxe Adhesive to make sure that they stay on there. Um, nine times out of ten I'm either using that or I'm using uh, crystal lacquer in my fine line applicator to make sure these things stick. Lately I've been using this Deluxe Adhesive because it doesn't usually leave a sheen behind whereas the crystal lacquer does we are coming up to the end of the video. If you have enjoyed this video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up down below. If you're not a subscriber, I'd love for you to subscribe to my channel and um, stick around for the close-ups. They'll be coming up in just a few moments here. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.